Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing, and I thought today it'd be a good idea to talk about how I prep my hackle feathers for when I'm tying wet flies or streamers. And um, there's a few little tips to it to make the job a little easier. I'm, I've got this black schlappen feather here. It, uh, this is schlappen, but it'll apply to saddle hackle or hen hackle. It doesn't matter. Soft hackle from partridge, these things all apply. So let's take a look at the feather to begin with. Okay, you can see that you have this fluffy stuff called phyloplume, and then you have, because this is schlappen, then you have this very webby barbs here, so it looks solid. If it was a cock hackle, it would, you know, the barbs would uh, look separated, and there would be a little bit of web. And if we look at the quill, we'll see it's very thick here, and then it gets, around about here it gets thin. Well, the thick part of the quill is very hard to wind. Uh, so you really can't use any part of the feather where the quill is quite thick. There is a way around it. You can soak it in water, and that will make it softer, and then you'll be able to wind it. But still, most of the time, this part of the feather we're not going to use. It's just, you know, the quill's just too thick. So about here on this feather where my thumb is, is about where we can start working with this feather. Everything from here down is useless. And I, I normally remove that just to make my life easy when I'm prepping the feather. The other thing that's noteworthy about feather is they ha it has a side. You've got one side that is curved inward, so it's curved like this, sort of curved like that. The, upper, the concave side is shiny, the convex side, the inside, is dull. And so we normally want to use the shiny side. We want the shiny side facing us. So we, when we're winding our hackle on, we want that shiny side to face forward. We want the dull side to face back. It also means any natural curve of the barb is also pointing back along the hook as well. So part of your, when you're prepping this, you have to figure out what side is the shiny side and what side is the dull side. It's usually pretty obvious. And just look for the curve. And you can see in this one, if I hold up the light, I can see the shininess and I can see the curve, so it's very easy. So when I start with a feather like this, the first thing I do is remove all of the material um, going from the, the bit where it'll bend, where I can actually use it. I'll remove everything else, and I point the butt away from me and pull like this, and it just comes off. And then, you see how I transferred my thumb to a new position? And then I pull. Don't, the, the thing is, when you have your thumb in this position here, don't be pulling up here. You'll break the quill. And then I'll just flip it over and do the same here. I can work my way back in this fashion. And when the quill starts getting th thinner, don't be gung-ho and taking lots of material off. Take a little bit off at a time. So now I've removed the excess down to where the, the quill gets thin. The next thing is to judge the length of the barb we want. And this goes according to the, uh, any pictures you have of the um, actual fly. So for example, how long do I want this hackle to be? Do I want it, you know, that far from the point? Or do I want it more like that far from the point? So I will have to, if I want to have a shorter hackle for here, I'm going to have to take some of this off. And I'm going to pull off some of this, and reduce the length of the hackle barbs because the further I, closer I get to the tip, the shorter they get. So I can start pulling away again, just take a little bit at a time because the quill is thin. And you keep, work, keep working your way down until you have taken off what you need to take off to get the length you want. So I'll stop there, I'll assuming that's the length I want. Now the next thing that you want to do is decide whether you're going to use both sides of the hackle or just one side. Um, if you're just using one side, uh, you can avoid trapping um, barbs underneath, having them point forward, other ugliness. You also get a sparser uh, looking hackle. And I'm going to assume that's what we want. So I'm going to pull off one side. You notice I've always got the, the butt facing away from me and I've got the shiny side face up. So the shiny side is looking at me. And I'll start taking some off here. I'll keep pulling off. You notice how 
I keep my thumb very close to where I'm pulling the barbs off. I don't uh, separate, get a lot of separation because if you do, you break the quill. And if you're finding it's a little bit stubborn, you see I'm just sort of, I'm just pecking away at it. There we go. Now I've got, the question is how much do I want? About an inch is usually pretty good for a moderately sparse hackle. If I wanted more, I'd keep going and keep adding more and more hackle to the length. You now need more room on the head of the fly to wind that on, especially when you are working with such uh, a limited amount of material. The last thing I do, once I've made a decision where I want that to end, I will then either do one of two things. I will bear a piece of barb like that for a tying in point, or I'll cut a triangle like that to create a tying in point. You got a choice. You can cut the triangle or you can leave a bare stem. Whatever works for you, whatever you want to do. Uh, either way, you've got something that you can tie in. So I'm going to put some thread on here. So now when I tie this in, I tie it with the, ha the hackle pointing down, or the barbs I should say pointing down, shiny side towards me. So when I start to wrap it, it will lay properly. So I'm just going to use, I'm not going to bother with my little triangle this time. Now, you can see as I turned the feather, it's in the perfect position to begin to wind. So when I start to turn, I start brushing things back. Always go in front of the previous turn. See, I'm brushing the always brushing the barbs back. There we go. Now I'm in a position to tie this off. There, now that's a little bit ragged. I would just come in here afterwards with my toothbrush and separate those barbs, especially with schlappen. Schlappen tends to mat together because there's so much web. So that's typical for schlappen. But you can see, you can very, very quickly put it together if you've prepped the feather ahead of time. The trick to know is how much uh, distance we need, how much length of barb we need to turn. And you can see I got about four or five turns out of that. Out of an inch on a typical hook, you're gonna get about five turns. So you need the room for those five turns. And keep that in mind. Um, always remember there's a shiny side and a, a dull side. When you're working with a feather, you always want the shiny side facing towards you. So it feather curves away from you. And when you're handling it, always keep the butt pointing away from you and you're pulling away and you keep your thumb very close to where you're tearing it. Now, one last little thing. If you've got uh, a feather where when you, as soon as you start to pull uh, the barbs off, the quill separates, uh, you're gonna have to use scissors. So I use curved scissors and I curve the, the curve of the scissor goes away from the quill. So, and I'll, I can get very close to the quill to trim off what I want. Very typically with marabou feathers, uh, a good part of the quill, you'll be able to pull off the barbs, but when you get close to the tip, you'll just break the quill. So that's where you come in with the scissors to finish it off. Uh, and I do that regularly. When I'm doing my uh, brown trout weemer pattern, that only uses one side of the, the marabou. I'll just rip off where the quill is thicker, come in with the scissors where it's thin and I'm good to go. So, you know, you, you do sometimes have to get the, your scissors out when you're dealing with very weak quills. S especially I've got some really old feathers here and they're, they're dry and they're brittle. And boy, as soon as I start pulling, they start breaking. So I have to come in with the scissors. But generally speaking, you can pull off. Just remember to keep your thumb close to where you're pulling and be patient. Just take a bit off at a time and it works fine. You'll be able to get a nice, neat hackle and get it ready to go. So there you go. Preparing your hackle for your wet flies and streamers. Cheers.